Uh, so, uh, I've been doing this for a, a lot of years and I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way and I'm hoping to be able to share some of that with you so that you don't have to do it. So, what problem are we trying to solve here today and who am I and how can I help? Well, as um, Greg said, I'm a, a, a long-time content strategist with a lot of experience and what the problem we're trying to solve today is about how to actually get your company or your agency or whoever it is, your client, to actually adopt a content strategy. So to sell a content strategy in, there are these four, and I'm not going to read them because we're going to cover each one of these. So each one of these has a slide. Anything that is on a gray background has its own slide, so we're just going to go through it. But I just will say that there are kind of four things you have to think about in the big picture to get a content strategy actually adopted. And um, this is from the School of Hard Knocks, so here we go. So the first thing is about framing the need for a content strategy. So when you want to have a content strategy, there are kind of three things you need to do, and, and again, we're going to have a slide on each of these. So you need to frame it in a way that people can understand you know, the, the, the need. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to speak their language. So are we all familiar with that term that says, when, um, when I'm, uh, no, if I'm selling to you, I speak your language, and, and when you're selling to me, you better sprechen the Deutsch, right? So it, that's, that's the same. Hello? Oh, okay. Uh, we're communicators, and so what we do is we practice communication. We talk about getting you know, the right content to the right person at the right time and um, communicating in the language that your audience understands. And we need to do that. So people trust other people who are in the know. So when people are talking to me, when executives are talking to me, I need to use executive language. I once had a business partner who thought the term ROI was jargon. And she wanted to call it getting your money's worth. And I said, let's just like, close the business right now because you're never going to get anywhere unless you know the terminology that executives use. So you want to sh show that you're in the know. And so you're going to talk about things like business goals. I, how many of you were in Cleve's session? No, okay. So he, he made that, um, that point very eloquently. So you're not going to go in and talk about content strategy because it's going to make your life easier. They're not really thinking about making your life easier as, one, as a reason to go out and spend a bunch of money to put in a new system or to change the way you're doing business. Um, by the way, hello in the back. My thing just went out. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I can't. Uh, HDMI to, oh, perfect. We're back in. Uh, so wh why they're going to put in a, a content strategy is because it's going to solve some business problem. So you need to be able to articulate what the business problem is. And so you know that in every organization they have some different form of currency. And it may be we have this business problem, we want to reach this goal, we want to diversify. Whatever that situation is, you need to figure out what that is. And often you can find it because it's like whatever the marketing department has issued uh, or your strategic planning group has issued and you notice things in there and you say, we're not going to be able to help you meet those goals unless we do something differently at our end. In one case, I had a situation where they wanted to take a medical device and start selling it in Europe and then they, the department I was working with broke it to them that they were at capacity for translation and to go into those countries, we need to be able to produce content faster and better and in more, iter in more iterations. And so we need to have this system. So all the, the, the years, uh, the, the year prior, we were trying to make the case and it didn't really work. As soon as they realized like, the implication of it, we will lose these sales potential sales at this trade show because we can't have the content ready and you're legally required to have that content products you sell. And that made the difference. So you have to understand the business goals and use the terminology that has currency in your organization. In one, um, in one company, they had this mantra. Everybody said the mantra is, if you can affect sales by half a percent, that's $50 million. 
And everyone would say that. So when you wanted to uh, kind of drive something home, you would just have to say half a percent, $50 million. And people kind of got what you were saying. So you have to figure out what's the jargon that your executives use and make sure that you're incorporating that so that they understand that you understand. Oh, and you also have to teach them your jargon because there, there are um, phrases that you may use like intelligent content or adaptive content or, you know, and they will hear some of these. They might not be quite clear on it, but you have to teach them your jargon, some of it, not a lot of it, but some of it because you don't want to have to say a paragraph each time. You want to be able to tell them in a very precise way what you're talking about. Like this is about content reuse. This is about modularity. This is about... Uh, adaptive content and so if you teach them a few of those phrases then when you're um, including those phrases in a PowerPoint slide for example or you're trying to explain something you say yes and that's all related to adaptive content then you know it twigs for them so that's the first thing the second thing is show them the money because ultimately you're not going to do this for the good of your health the company doesn't want to um, and I had this explained to me as like we're not being paid to build a Mercedes. We're being paid to build like a, you know, a, 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 well, they didn't use, it was in, in Nor, um, sorry, in Europe. So it was like a Fiat something, but you'd say like a, a Ford Focus. We're being paid to make, make a Ford Focus, something that just works and is, you know. So you can say, yes, I get that, but what I don't want you to do is build the back half of a Ford Focus, right? So you have to say, we need, the, the, um, we need to understand the business impact and we need to be able to make our case. And if you sit down with the number crunchers, they will help you crunch the numbers. You can say, how much does this cost over there? And how much do we lose over here? And if we were to save um, five minutes a day per person on this task, what would it be over the course of a year when you take into account all of the you know, the way that you uh, account for overhead. And so they will sit down and they will help you because nobody ever goes and talks to the bean counter. So the fact that you're doing that, they're going to be delighted. And they will tell you how the company calculates things. Because some places will include things like, you know, um, square footage per desk and others don't. And others will calculate certain factors, you know, product related factors and others don't. So if you can show them that you have uh, created a solid business case for it, you can uh, give them some numbers, even if the, the numbers are a bit theoretical, but the fact that you've gone through the exercise and you've used things that are familiar to them and that you can defend your position, it's going to go a long way. And that whole thing about being able prepared to defend your position is important because there's nothing worse than going in and showing a calculation and somebody goes, that number's wrong. And because that number's wrong, now it's like the deck of cards or, you know, like the Jenga game. They pulled out that thing and everything, um, everything else collapsed around it. And you don't want that to happen. So you want to go in with like a solid, uh, a solid case and you want to be able to um, defend it. And they're going to question it because that's their job is to question it. People come to them all the time probably with um, initiatives that they want to happen. And in one place, I was actually quite surprised because I said, okay, you know, so you've got a bunch of initiatives going on. And they said, we had 300 requests last year. And some of them were duplicates and some of them were at cross purposes. So we try to bring in all the requests and then we streamline the ones that we think are most important to make the business happen. And a lot of stuff falls by the wayside. And you don't want your stuff falling by the wayside. So if you make that really solid case, make sure your numbers all add up and that you can um, defend it when they question it and show how it connects to other things, you're in a, a much stronger position.